Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining us today. My name is Youssef Munair. I'm the director here at the Jerusalem Fund, and on behalf of our uh, board of directors, very happy to welcome you back uh, to this Palestine Center event today. Uh, we're glad to host Iyad Burnat uh, to speak about the nonviolent movement in uh, Bil'aim. Uh, Iyad tells uh, stories of uh, Bil'aim in, uh, of course, the occupied Palestinian West Bank and is going to talk about strategies for a nonviolent popular resistance with the goal of uh, peace and prosperity for all people. Um, we're, we're happy to have his presentation. It's going to be accompanied by photos and video clips, many of them from the uh, film Five Broken Cameras, which we're happy to say has received tremendous recognition, has been nominated, of course, uh, for an Academy Award, and it's directed by that's right, and it's directed by uh, his brother, Ahmed. Um, Iyad is, uh, is in the film, as, as, as many um, uh, subjects in Bil'ain are, uh, as the film documents the uh, popular resistance movement uh, and the frequent repression of that uh, movement through uh, the prism of the five broken cameras. I'd like to uh, introduce Iyad for a discussion on the nonviolent movement in Bilain. Iyad? Shukran. Thank you. Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, you know, this is uh, the last uh, meeting that's here in the United States after uh, three months of tour. I've been in uh, many states, many cities, many events, and it was uh, wonderful that I meet a lot of people, and this is what our goal, our message to American people, especially the American people, that they didn't know more about the situation in Palestine, and they, did, they didn't know, most of them, that I meet a lot of people and most of them didn't know there is, uh, that there is money goes to Israel's army. And this is the time that everybody have to know in the United States and this is our message. And because of this I am happy to meet you and to meet all the people here uh, in the United States. So we have the nonviolent resistance in Palestine, and it's a grow. We we doesn't start in Bilain village as a nonviolent resistance. It's the in the history of the Palestinian resistance. That if we talk about many years ago, that we find a lot of intifada, a lot of demonstration by nonviolent way against the Israeli occupation in our. Palestinian land. So if we go back to 1987, that's the first intifada, the famous intifada for the Palestinian. I was 15 years old in that time and I joined the intifada with my friends. I been arrested for two years and it was in nonviolent way. 2003, the Israelis start to build the apartheid wall around Palestinian villages and cities. And this is the goal of the Israeli's army. This is the goal of the wall. That's to put the Palestinian together in jail. To make the life of the Palestinian hard day by day. And it doesn't start in 2003. It started from 1948. That's the Israelis make the life of the Palestinian hard killing people, demolition villages to remove the Palestinians from their houses. And they continue until now. In Bil'in village, as a case of the nonviolent resistance in West Bank, Bil'in is a small village. As you know, we have our nonviolent resistance eight years now, every Friday. We have, we use every Friday a new idea of our resistance. So here I have some photos that's. <coughs> so as you see, uh, we have uh, the, red uh, the red line is the apartheid wall. 
the green line is you know the green line is uh, what United Nation mentioned in 1967 that's two states Palestinian state and Israeli state always we have the Israelis didn't care for any international laws for any agreements between the Palestinian and the Israelis from the beginning so here as you see after the wall after the green line the Israelis start to build settlements everywhere in the, round, uh, in the ground of the Palestinian, in the land of the Palestinian. So from 1993, as after Oslo agreement, we have seven settlements that they built it on the land of Bilain and on the land of other villages around Bilain. So if you look between the apartheid wall and between the green line, we have in Bilain area six kilometers. This six kilometers is full of settlements, as you see. For example, we have Mudain Elite, the biggest settlement up there. We have 60,000 people live in this settlement now, in 10 years. When they started to build the apartheid wall in Bilain, and you know, it's when they started to uh, take the land, to confiscate the land, they confiscated it by security reason or by a uh, closed military area. They use many laws against the Palestinians to take their land and to confiscate their land. The lung of the wall is about 750 kilometers around West Bank, around the cities. So the Palestinian will have, after the wall, 12% from their land. 12% they cut it to pieces. That's there is no contact between the Palestinian cities and the villages inside of West Bank area. And we have also inside of West Bank area, we have more than 250 settlements, half million settlers living inside of West Bank. So it's mean that the Israelis continue to build the settlements, continue to build houses and new houses in the settlement. They never stop build settlement in, uh, in our villages. They never stop attack the people, attack the farmers by the settlers also. That's the settler is part of the army. All the settlers in West Bank, they have guns. And you know, you have in the news sometimes, I don't know if you're in news is tell you about this, but uh, you know, we have uh, every day, we have attack from the settlers for the farmers, especially in the north where it's Nablus area and uh, Tul Karim. The settlers guns and attack the people. They burn the olive trees of the farmers. So when they started to build the apartheid wall in Bilain in December 2004, they destroyed 1,000 olive trees for the farmers. Olive trees, it's a big mean for the farmers as a Palestinian. First, it's the holy tree. It's the food of the farmers. It's the life of the people there as a farmer. Bilain is a small village. We have 1,900 people living in Bilain. Most of them is a farmers. When the Israelis start to build the, our, the apartheid wall, they confiscated 2,300 dunums from the, the farm of the people. It's about 60% from the land of the village. And this land is full of olive trees. Most of the people is a farmer. It means that most of the people lost their jobs, lost their olive trees, lost their land. And also the wall comes where is the quaffer of the water for the Palestinian. As a Palestinian, we have enough water to use in our life. But the Israelis, by the wall, they stole this water and they give it to the settlements around the village. And you will feel that if you visit and you see there that the settlement is uh, green, 24 hours the water, and swimming pools, everything they have. If you look to other side, to Palestinian village, you will see everything is brown. You will see that the Palestinian roofs is full of tanks to collect the water. And sometimes when the Israelis attack, Israeli soldiers attack the village at night time or in the day, they shoot these tanks by a rubber bullet. And this is what they want to do for the Palestinian, just to make the life hard day by day. So we started our non-violent resistance in Bilain 2004 and it was every day until February 2005. The people saw the bulldozers attack their 
all of the trees attack, uh, destroyed their farms so everybody go in the streets women's children everybody men to go to the streets to fight against the bulldozers to try to stop the bulldozers to destroy their land and we use the non-violent way in our struggle in february 2005 we organized ourselves and we built our committee we decided to have the demonstration every week since eight years we have our demonstrations every week every friday we have a new idea that we use in our demonstration to send our message to many people in the world that they didn't know what's the mean of the apartheid world because you know the israel is a propaganda everywhere that said this is for security and everything when they want to attack the palestinian to destroy the life of the palestinian they says for security reason but the wall is as i i told you 750 kilometers the green line is 320 kilometers so it's mean that the the green the apartheid world comes more than twice bigger than the green line it comes like a snake to take more land from the palestinian land to build more settlements to put the Palestinian together in jail. And this is what's happened now. That's there is no contact between the Palestinian villages by the wall and the settlements. And this is what's happened. That's the people from Ramallah, for example, they cannot go to Jerusalem. They need a permission to go there. And for security reason, most of the Palestinian didn't have a permission. I never been in Jerusalem. And it's 25 kilometer from our home. If we want to go to Jenin, for example, from Ramallah, we have to spend all the day to go there because the checkpoints and the settlements and the borders of the checkpoints. So I think this is what the Israelis doing now. This is what they want the Palestinian to do. They force them by fear there is food. They force them by destroying their life to leave the villages and to leave this uh, area. And we know that the Israelis, Zionists now, they called for a Jewish state. It means that they didn't want a Christian or a Muslim or a Palestinian under the occupation to be in that area. So it's not from now. This idea, it's started from 19. 48 when the occupation started for uh, in Palestine so as uh, uh, I told you we started the non-violent way uh, as a weekly demonstration uh, in uh, February 2005 we put ourselves in cages in front of the bulldozers uh, we put ourselves in uh, barrels in cylinders we fight by our bodies as a, a non-violent way all the people was join us in our demonstrations we have internationally from all of the world that's participate with us in our demonstrations we have every week israelis activists also that's come and but join us in our demonstrations every week so in uh, in other side we find a lot of violence from the israeli soldiers that they try to break us by many ways a lot of way, ways, non-violent ways, started from using a lot of uh, weapons against us, many kinds of weapons that's illegal to use it in the non-violent demonstrations. Or it's illegal by the international law to use it against the people. But the Israeli army was used it against us in our non-violent demonstrations direct to the people. And when, you, when we say that tear gas or rubber bullet that's the people uh, the israelis propaganda also play by the words of the weapons that what they use so tear gas it's mean for eyes or to keep a people away rubber bullet it's not so danger that's what they say in their the propaganda but what they use it's really a rockets against the people they use the tear gas direct to the people to kill the people and we have two was killed in our village in Belaim. We have 40 people was killed around the villages in non-violent demonstration like in Nalin or Budros or Al-Masara or Al-Walaja or Nabi Saleh. So we have 
a, a lot of violence from the Israeli soldiers and also all these weapons made in the United States what they use against us every week we have 1300 people was injured in Belain village as a small village all these weapons is made in the United States and also the weapons they didn't know when they shot these weapons they didn't know if you are a Palestinian or Israeli or international so we have a lot of our friends that's been injured as international by these weapons in Belain we have uh, our friend Christian Anderson that he's been shot in Nalin village by the tear gas canister and this tear gas that's the same tear gas that shot our friend Basim Abu Rahma and he was killed in Belain when they shot him in his chest it's make a big hole in his chest it's mean that this is very danger weapons that they use it against the people in Belain in other villages now we have many people was killed by these weapons that they use it direct to the people and uh, these weapons that we called it the black rocket that they use it in the demonstration uh, it's made in the United States and the American army was used it to broken the windows when they want to attack some place in Belain they use it against the people direct in 20 meters or in 15 meters and this is because uh, this uh, by using this uh, tear gas because this we have a lot of people was killed and injured uh, around all the villages and where we do our nonviolent struggle so uh, they use uh, as I told you many kinds of uh, ways many kinds of weapons to break us in our nonviolent struggle so also on at night time when they was attack the village and it was sometimes every night that's a big group of soldiers attack the village at night time uh, cover their faces with gu with guns with dogs attack the houses wake everybody from his sleeping just to make the village very hard life at night time and it's made a, a lot of problems for the children that's the grow with the non with the violent of the Israeli soldiers at night time in the day so we have 150 being injured been uh, arrested in the village and most of them is the children that they was put them in jail between four months to 18 months and they have to pay to the court money each one that he's been arrested they have to pay to the court between 2,000 to 15,000 shekel this is to break the children to break the families that they know uh, the families also they lost their land they lost their olive trees they lost their jobs so they want to break them by the money to put on their children in in the court as a money to pay to the court children it's in our village is 13 years old 14 years old 15 years old most of the people who's been arrested is a, is a children if you see a, a five broken cameras movie you will see in the movie that how all these children was arrested and how is how the Israeli soldiers were was arrested them at night time in the village and it was uh, sometimes every night they was attack the village to break the people because they know the Israelis army know that's our way our non-violent way is affected the Israelis army they know that by this way we can succeed against the Israelis propaganda against the Israelis army against the Israelis economy because this is the three strong legs that the Israelis occupation and stand on the army they have a strong army they have strong media everywhere in the world and we feel this media here in the United States that they have a strong media and they have a strong economy by this way we can fight by our people on the ground we can break the Israelis army they cannot use against us the planes or the rockets in the demonstration they need a lot of soldiers a group of soldiers to stop us in nonviolent demonstration 
everybody can join us in our demonstration by this way international media palestinian children women everybody can join us in this demonstration so they need a lot of money to spend on the army to stop these people and now it's a grow in palestine we have 20 villages 20 places that's doing the weekly demonstration every friday and they need a lot of soldiers to stop these people they need a lot of tear gas a lot of weapons to use and they're lost they're lost by this way and in other side by our boycott by our friends outside that's leading the bds movement they can we can fight the israeli's economy and it's a grow everywhere in europe here in the united states that's many people start to know and to boycott the israelis occupation the second the third is the the media here we didn't see that the american media show anything from our struggle from our non-violent way the situation in palestine the people who's living under the occupation suffering every day by the occupation the farmers they didn't show here anything it's mean that the israelis media is control the american media they didn't show the two sides they show one side in their media and by this way we can fight the media by this way we have a lot of friends as from the united states from europe that's visiting us every week and these people is our messengers outside they can show our message outside to their friends to their students to their families so we can send this message to many people by our media we can fight the media by this way so it's a grow it's a grow everywhere that we know now a lot of people know about the situation in palestine and what's going on so i think it's ready okay uh, so here uh, we have some uh, photos that give you more uh, information about the the ideas the weapons that they was used in uh, our demonstration against the people during uh, the since year uh, since eight years of our struggle so if we look here we see a uh, tear gas canister that they use it by uh, the guns also direct to the people here's some of our ideas that we use in, other, in our demonstration you know what's this yes it's a avatar uh, movie that we make uh, our people as avatar people and they go to the wall uh, so when the soldiers saw avatar people comes they didn't know what to do in that time here is some of the weapons that we talk about this is uh, uh, water as look like water but it's uh, chemical things they collect it together to make very bad smell that they use it every week now against the people uh, you have to throw your clothes out you have to wash yourself many times if you get some of this water in your body this is all also other tear gas that they use 50 tear gas in the same time by machine against the people in the demonstration here's the olive trees that we talk about they destroyed more than 1000 olive tree and these olive trees is more than 1000 year old so many kinds of weapons here it's uh, if you search or you google the tear gas canister you will find that most of these weapons is made in the united states so I know this kind, it's made in uh, Pennsylvania, for example, this one. Here is our friend Basim Abrahma. He's been shot by the tear gas canister. You will see that uh, this is our flotilla to Gaza. That's when, uh, when uh, we didn't have time or chance to go to Gaza to join our friends. By, they didn't give us permission, so we make our flotilla in our village. It's a lot of tear gas they use every week against the people. 
so this is the tear gas that we talk about the black one it's very danger very fast they have to use it in 500 meters in the sky uh, and uh, you know it's they use it uh, against the people direct to the people in 15 meters by this one we have many people what has been injured and killed so uh, in the last one in Ali in Nabi Saleh village they shot him in one meter by this one and he's died in the place in his face sometimes we have a demonstration for the children after the night raids and the hard life of the children at night just to ask the soldiers we want to sleep here is other kind of the tear gas that they use it also they have tear gas and they have fire and this is how they was burned the olive trees at night time that we talk about the hard time of the children that's the when the soldiers attack the houses they have to wake everybody from his sleeping so I've been arrested many times in the demonstrations so uh, you know Belain become a famous village in the world after the nonviolent resistance after we succeed to uh, send our message to the people in the world we succeed to demolish part of the wall in Belain village and it's the first time that we have the Israelis court have a decision to demolish part of the wall and to move it back 500 meters and it's mean we have 1000 dunums back to the farmers in Belain village uh, and we succeed to stop 2000 apartment in the settlement Metityahu Mizrah that's a new settlements they build it on our land and they start to build it after 2003 so we succeed to send our message to many people in the world we succeed to invite a lot of people as a famous people people who have Nobel Peace Prize a, a lot of uh, a European uh, Parliament a member in the Parliament they visiting us in Belain many groups from all of the world not just in the demonstrations also in other w days in the week they visit Belain and they join us in our uh, situation there so here for example he wa we have Jimmy Carter he visit Belain with Tosman Tutu and he said that time in that time he says that this is apartheid wall this is illegal settlement uh, and when he's come back here to United States I heard that the Zionist attack him by this but everybody who's go there who will uh, uh, say that here's the soldiers at time uh, at night time when they come to arrest somebody that's with with dogs with guns with here's Metutiahu Mizrah settlements that's on the land of the village all these settlements on the land of Belain village here's the soldiers at night time and you have a lot of weapons that's they are uh, right on it made in the United States as you see we have many of our friends American uh, friends that comes and join us in our demonstrations also as you see many kinds of weapons every week they use against the people as the rockets weapons and all these weapons they shoot it by the guns direct to the people here is Mudain elite settlement that they continue to build new houses on the land of the people destroyed the olive trees we have 50,000 to 60,000 people live now in this settlement so a lot of ideas we use in our demonstration every week since eight years that we have a new idea this is for example a um, Martin Luther King with Mahatma Gandhi and Nelson Mandela that we make our people look like them to lead us in one of our demonstrations in a Friday uh, we have a lot of uh, ideas we have uh, many demonstrations that we use uh, creative ideas in and since eight years and now also we have uh, used these ideas in other villages uh, 
uh, we have many places that's doing the same Ubilayin demonstration. As you heard before, a uh, few weeks we started to build uh, the uh, villages as in a uh, West Bank area near the settlements by our people but always the Israelis attack these uh, villages and they demolish the tents in these villages and arrested uh, the people but we continue on the ground to uh, work to uh, resist by the non-violent way uh, as we continue Administrations, uh, are you fairly successful in getting press coverage, or how is that working in terms of, you know, getting that kind of attention for what you're doing? The media. Yes, uh, every week we have media. In our demonstrations, we have uh, Palestinian media, we have international media, sometimes Israeli media, but uh, they didn't show this media as what's happened on the ground, and we didn't know why. That's we didn't saw these things in here in the United States. We have many international media that uh, comes and uh, show what we are doing, but we didn't see this in the Western media. That's as a Palestinian, we believe that this media is controlled by the Israeli media. And because of this, they didn't show what's happened really on the ground for the Palestinian. But in other side, we have our media that we can fight. It's a small media, but it's a grow by internet by our friends as a messenger outside so we fighting also by our media to get the message to many people in the world now adib uh, been uh, released he's spent uh, 18 months in jail uh, he's been uh, released uh, but we have um, every time we have people uh, in jail if, if not from belain from other villages that's the israelis use this strategy to arrest it uh, uh, many people from the villages, uh, the leaders, to put them in jail to keep them away from the uh, villages. So this is their strategy that's to arrest people, to shoot the people, to kill more people, that's to break us and to let us stop our actions. When you, uh, you said you've been arrested multiple times, what are you, do they take you in front of a judge, do they put you in administrative detention? How does that process work with being as far as any kind of quote unquote justice system? Uh, it's really very hard that's to talk about the Palestinian prisoners in general that's the all the Palestinian prisoners that uh, they treated them very hard when they arrested them so I live this life and I know when I in the first intifada I've been arrested and I they put me in jail for two years for nothing but they said that I was throwing stones when they arrested me it, it was at middle of the night that's I was sleeping, I was child, so they take me and they treated me very bad, in, especially in the 21 days, the first 21 days, that put me in bad situation, beating me, they take all my clothes outside in the cold, in the night time in a small village as a small room, as you can just stand, you cannot sleep, so it's very very hard. And they was just want me to sign on a paper that they write it in Hebrew language. And I have to sign after 21 days. I cannot live more in under this situation. So uh, I find the paper in the court that the judge said, and you know, we are, we as a Palestinian, we're going to military court. They said that I was throwing stones. I've been lead the demonstration, the school. I am in uh, many things. So he's given me. Uh, two years. I spent these two years in Nakab jail. When I go to Nakab jail in that time, I find 20,000 people there. And most of them is children. And this is the life of the prisoners. Until now, we have the children who's been arrested, as I told you, 13, 14, 15 years old. And they put him with everybody in jail. They treated the, them very bad. So this is the uh, situation. I've been uh, ar arrested many times during the uh, non-violent struggle in Belain, just to keep me away from the, uh, d uh, from the village. And also the mem other members in the committee that's been arrested for a long time and they, uh, to keep them away from the village. And uh, the court is military court that they believe the soldiers, they, they didn't believe uh, the people. We have one question from Twitter. 
Um, she asks, uh, other than writing our members of Congress, what can we as Americans do to change this? I think this is a very important question that I find these questions in all the events that I do uh, uh, around three months now. So it's very important for the Palestinian to work in this country as a people. Because as a Palestinian, we believe that this country is part of the occupation. Because the weapons that they send support the Israeli's army by, the money three and a half billion dollars a year, it goes to Israeli's army. The companies who destroyed the land of the Palestinian is American companies and also by su political support. Every time we find that United States is against the Palestinian by the veto in International Security Council or in United Nations or everywhere. So we have to work here. We have to stop aid to Israeli occupation. This is the message from the Palestinian people that send it to all the people in United States that we want to stop the aid to Israeli occupation. You have many ways, not just by the message to the Congress, you can fight in the streets, you can fight the media here, you can show the message of the Palestinian to everybody here in the United States. By BDS movement, you can also fight here. So you have many things to do uh, here in the United States to, uh, to send the message clear to the people. And the people will put pressure for, to the government to stop the aid to Israeli occupation. I have some questions about your creative techniques uh, in your nonviolent demonstrations. What were the blue um, barrels that people were in? And you know, how, what was the thing about the neck? How you uh, put the necks in uh, the steel or whatever that was? What are those exactly? Uh, this is, you know, we fight by our bodies and we find these ideas that we can uh, stop the bulldozers. It was in the road of the bulldozers, where, where is the bulldozers goes and it was early morning before the bulldozers comes. So we have to put ourselves inside of things to give hard for the soldiers to take us out. And these times that's in barrels or in uh, uh, the wall under uh, our body or the, the cage and many ideas like this, it was stopped the work in that day because it's take a long time for the soldiers to take the people and to arrest them and to take them from jail or, fr or from the uh, barrels or uh, from this. And it uh, shows that all, every time the Israeli army was said that this is violent demonstrations, this is terrorist people and there is a propaganda. So this is what we show to the people that we are non-violent. We just fighting by our bodies. We fight, we type our hands, we type our mouth sometimes. We go to the demonstration just to know that the Israeli propaganda show as a Palestinian is a terrorist every time. They show that the Palestinian want to destroy Israel. This is what they say in their propaganda. But really on the ground, it's different. We have our people that suffering every day by the occupation. And we use the nonviolent way in our struggle. This is the message. Yes, uh, for, my, for me, I, uh, I, am, uh, I didn't believe in uh, two states. I believe in one state, one democratic state that everybody can live in freedom, justice, equality in this state. There is no chance for two states. You have to know everybody. 12% of, of the land of the Palestinian, there is where is the Palestinian now in West Bank. This 12% after the wall, we have 250 settlements. We have half million settlers. We have 600 checkpoints inside of this area. So where is the Palestinian state? So we work, we believe in one state solution that's democratic state, that everybody can live together in freedom and justice and equality. Hi, I, somebody may have gone over this and I apologize, I left the room for a little while. I am interested to know uh, what's the reaction or um, what you're able to do in terms of the Oscar nomination for your 
Brothers film, um, I wonder if people really understand the importance of that nomination and how much it must uh, really irritate the Israelis and what you can do to, um, you know, I, I guess I hate to say this publicly almost, um, I, as the Oscars are also done for creative reasons, um, are given for creative reasons, that I've seen only pieces of your brother's film, but it's really an excellent uh, I idea. It, from what I've seen of it, it's, it's very moving and very potent. Uh, I hope that people in Palestine understand uh, that they should really uh, use that momentum to, um, to increase awareness of the situation for other people in Palestine. Because I know that there are um, little uh, encampments growing in other parts of Palestine to uh, combat things in this way. The nonviolent issue is something that people uh, and the Israeli um, people who are against the idea of Palestinians having anything at all, how much that really bothers them to have this kind of publicity, positive publicity given to the nonviolent uh, movements that we've really created there, that they prefer to have people just assume we're all violent and we're terrorists and that's the only way that we operate. Thanks. Thank you. I think uh, for us the important thing in uh, this movie that we get a lot of people to see the life of the Palestinian under the occupation. This is the important thing that's message to the people to see that. And it's uh, when it's nominated to, uh, to Oscar, we have a lot of people that see this movie. If it's win on the Oscar, it will be a lot of people also saw this movie. So the important thing that we want as a message from the Palestinian people who's suffering, who's uh, living under the occupation, a farmer who's lost their land, uh, children who's grow with the violence of the Israeli soldiers, uh, people who's been killed in nonviolent demonstration. This is what we want to show to the people that they didn't know by their media what's going on in Palestine. So this is the important thing for us. That's to spread our message to many people in the world. And also in the Palestinian area in West Bank, that's they show the movie just last week. In Ramallah, there was 1,000 people in the, uh, in the meeting there. And we have the, uh, our friend Guy Davidi that show also the movie in high school, in Israeli's high school. And you didn't believe the response of the uh, Israeli student that they didn't know anything about what happened there and they are just a few kilometers from us so it's good it's important that we show the message of the palestinian to other people in the world thank you